In this video, I'd like to show you how to graph a change in supply. So a change in supply can occur for a number of reasons. It could be that there's been a change in the number of suppliers. Maybe new suppliers have entered the market. Could be a change in the price of factors of production. Maybe labor became uh, cheaper or so forth. Could be that there was an advance in technology. For example, fracking dramatically increased the supply of natural gas. Or there could be even be a change to the weather. For example, if a, a hurricane were to hit Florida, it could reduce the supply of oranges. And when we say that we have an increase in supply, what we mean is that the supply curve is going to shift to the right. So let's say that we have our standard upward sloping supply curve. So I'll call that S1. And then something happens that increases the supply. What that means is that we're going to have a shift. The curve is going to shift to the right. And we're going to have an entirely new supply curve. Conversely, if the supply were to decrease, what that means is that the curve is going to shift to the left. And then we would have a new supply curve to the left. So I want to show you an example to make it a little bit easier to understand. Let's say that a tsunami hits the country of Costa Rica and destroys a number of coffee plantations. I hope that doesn't happen, but let's say that it did. We could go and we could look at the quantity of coffee supplied before, right? So this is before, this is our supply schedule before the tsunami hits. At different prices, we could look and see, okay, what was the quantity that producers were willing to supply? So let's say at $1 a pound, that coffee producers were willing to supply 3 million pounds of coffee or so forth, okay? So I've, I've, we can put this together and we can actually map out our supply curve, right? Which we've talked about in previous videos. So we've got our supply curve here. And now what we can do is we can say, okay, well, what's going to happen now that the tsunami wiped out a bunch of coffee plantations? Is that going to increase or is that going to decrease the supply of coffee? Well, it's pretty clear in this example that it's going to decrease the supply of coffee, right? Because a bunch of coffee plantations got wiped out, so we're going to have a decrease in supply. And that means that the curve is going to shift to the left. But I want to show you why it's going to shift to the left. So if we look at each price, so let's look at $1, for example. It used to be, before the tsunami, the quantity that producers were willing to supply was 3 million pounds of coffee. But now at $1, the producers are only willing to supply zero coffee, right? They're not, they're not willing to give any coffee at all. And at, six, at a price of $2 a pound, before they were willing to supply 6 million pounds of coffee, and now they're only willing to supply 3 million. So you see at each, at each price, the amount that they're willing to supply has decreased. It has decreased after, uh, th now that we've had this, this decrease in supply, that these coffee plantations have been wiped out. So what, do, what does that practically mean? That means that we're going to draw a whole new supply curve. We're going to draw an entirely new supply curve here. And so when we say that it shifts, what we mean is we have a new supply curve, and I'm going to call that S2. I'm going to show you how I came up with that and why it's shifted to the left. Let me show you here. I put a little arrow so you know that shifts to the left. That's a new, this is a new supply curve. And the reason it shifts to the left is because if we look at, for example, a price of $1. At a price of $1, now the quantity supplied is zero. So we're going to be right here. It used to be that at a price of $1, the quantity supplied was three right here. But we had to move it over. We had to move it over because there's been this decrease in supply. And so now we've had this shift in supply. So now you might be wondering, for example, what would happen to the price of coffee? So what we would need to do to, to find, find that is we would have to draw a demand curve. Now, I don't have a, a demand schedule here that I put together. I'm just going to draw a generic demand curve. And let's just say that, that that's our demand. So now what we can do is we can go, so our original equilibrium would have been right here because we've got, we've got our demand, and then we had S1. That was our original supply curve before the tsunami. So our price, our price, well, I'll call this P1, about there, around $3. And then let's say here, here would have been our quantity. So let's call that Q1. So we were originally here at our equilibrium, but now we look at S2, the new supply curve, because the tsunami hit, we have a new supply curve, and then the same demand curve. The demand curve doesn't, doesn't change. So now we have the new equilibrium is here. 
So now let's see what happens. So now Q2 is the new quantity in equilibrium, and P2 is the new price. So what we see is that this decrease in supply has actually increased the price. So the equilibrium price has increased and the equilibrium quantity has gone down.